time that they have to practice their English is uh, just in class. I get these students at the NGO for uh, two hours a week, uh, once on Tuesday and once on Thursday. And they can't, they don't have any more exposure to the English language. If I don't give them some way of practicing when they're not in the classroom, they're never going to pick up these sounds. They're going to start looking at words and they're going to start trying to speak or pronounce these words in from what they see, from the way they're spelled. And they're never actually, and, the, and even worse than not pronouncing them correctly, they're going to create vices and they're going to practice pronouncing words incorrectly. And once you've developed a vice like that, it's really hard to break it. So you got to make sure that your students have their manual. It's like a cheat sheet. They basically, they, they, they can write words down in English. Hmm. Mal's frozen for you guys. Now may he, he's offline. He's gonna come back in. I actually I just do this so I can give a little commercial interruption to say hello to everybody because you know I like to have the attention. <laughs> Mal's gone, but he's not gone. Gone. <laughs> Hi everybody. Commercial time. <laughs> love you too, Elena. Love all of you. Mal, Mal, it must have just been an internet connection thing. Actually, he may have actually, I did this earlier where I pushed, uh, I actually exited by mistake. Yes, he's go, went, gone. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. Stay tuned. We should see him. Uh, Skil Sylvia, uh, Chalky, uh, any of the other, uh, oh, here we go. Oh, offline again. If you see him come in. You want a song? Okay, but you got to give me a, uh, it's a little early for freestyle. Tell me one of the songs that I do and I'll do it for you. I'll do, you know what I'll do? I got one. I'm going to do a little pronunciation one. <clears throat> Please tell me when Mal comes back in. <laughs> He'll be back yet. Yeah. It could be video. Oh man, I was going to do a little rap, man. One of my, one of my uh, sound spelling ones, man. Just, just for you. Shoot. All right. If we have time at the end, I'll do a little snippet of it. If not, you'll have to wait for my class next week. Ah, uh, you're doing good, baby. I'm, I'm getting out of here. All right. Okay, sorry about that. Fiber optics, you know, when it crashes, it crashes for real. Can everyone hear me? Awesome. Okay, so like I said, this is a cheat sheet that you can set up with any student any way. All right, so there are many different ways that you can use this. There are many different uh, applications for it, and there are many different exercises that you can build on top of that. Oh, yes, look into the camera and speak. I'm sorry, guys. I keep thinking and I look up. I'll imagine all of you within this camera. Okay. Can't hear anything, Meta. Hmm. Can anyone not hear anything? Can anyone We're not? okay, We're okay good, overall. Good. Don't worry about it, man. It's just an internet issue probably for individuals, so do your thing. All right, good. So I saw some things like uh, people saying, oh, do you encourage cheating and that sort of thing? Those are very good questions, but I'll leave that for a Q&A at the end or afterwards. I'll just, because uh, there's, uh, I'd actually like to go with exercise, because I think this gives you an idea of what you can do and the different... Um, uh, the, yeah, the different techniques that you can use. However, I also wanted to show you an exercise since uh, we talked about it and how, how you can use it. So I'm going to actually do some screen sharing. So I need you guys to tell me if you can see. I actually need to know what you can see. All right, so screen share starting now. So we are connecting. Okay, so do you see my screen now? Yes. Assume says yes. Anybody else see the WizIQ screen? Yes. All right. And I'm moving to tripping. Tripping 
It, Tripping is the website that I built. Um, that it teaches English in a lot of ways. Um, I I would love to tell everyone lots here to talk about the exercise with pronunciation. So let's let me just see. Can ever can can everyone see the can everyone see tripping? Yeah, let me. I have to go back to see if you're saying yes. Okay, and then you see. Okay, so if you can see tripping, you probably see Australia. Uh, once you go on to tripping, uh, the game, it's a game that teaches English. For those of you who don't know, it's a game that teaches English around the world. And uh, it begins in Australia. So once you get there, you click on Australia, and you have all these different stories about uh, that happen in Australia, and uh, which you have to watch and um, learn English, uh, prove that you've learned English by doing fun little exercise and getting points. Every, uh, every time you, move, you get over 80%, in each of these stories, then it unlocks the next one. Uh, so the one I want to use is Bus to Bondi. Now, Bus to Bondi, Bondi is a place in Australia, in Sydney. It's a, it's a beach, Bondi Beach. And it's a very popular beach, so it teaches you how to get there. But the bus ride takes 30 to 40 minutes. So it's a good idea to play some games along the way. So this is the video that I uh, that I de developed based on this idea of using, of spelling that sound, and it's called See What I See. So I'll just play the video for you. So yeah, it was really, really hard to hear and a little bit of delay, man. But we gave it a shot. People will just have to go to Trippin and check, check it out. Please explain, because I think people watching the recording also are going to not really not see it. So if you could just explain, that's that would be perfect. All right. What the video was, was uh, the use of uh, developing and spelling that sound but associating that to Pipton. So it's not just having your own personal little sound glossary. It's also connecting um, phrases and words to, to images. Hopefully, or better, if they're, like, uh, if they're familiar to each person. So 
Uh, what the video was is basically, yeah, connecting the idea of sound to a figure uh, on tripping, the exercise that shows you the picture, asks you to recollect the sound and uh, write that down. Oh, sorry to down. stop you again, but uh, we need you to speak. I think the mic is maybe a little far. And uh, there yes. we go. And we need to see you in the camera, man. You're too much like me. You're all over the place, man. You're like me. You've got to focus on me. I can see myself again, man. <laughs> All right. Get there slowly but surely. We'll get there. All right. So, um, once again, looking into the camera so that we, when we edit this out, it's going to look amazing. So, the idea of the exercise that we just uh, had a look at that you can find on tripping is to associate pictures to sounds that students create. So, the video just uh, repeats um, a useful sentence uh, for anyone looking. Uh, activity. So uh, if people are doing that, the whole idea of, excuse me, where can I catch a bus to Bondi Beach um, is really useful. Actually, the scenario, you can just eliminate the fourth part to Bondi Beach and whatever city you want. So it's a useful sentence in any scenario. And uh, by connecting images in the video to the sound that students are creating, uh, we then take them to an exercise where they have to write the words in English. So it teaches them not only to pronounce it and not uh, only a better way to remember this uh, information, but also uh, it connects to the accurate spelling of the word in English. We're still teaching them how to write, not in a language that they've created. Um, so that was the example that I was showing you. If you want to see more of it, there's a lot more of it on tripping. The link will probably be somewhere, but if you want to remember it, the easiest way to remember tripping is it's three W's and tripping with three P's. Dot com. So that's three W's, tripping with three P's, no G. Dot com. And as repetition, soul of picking up language, then for the third time, three W's, tripping with three P's. Dot com. So, yeah, it's free to sign up, actually, and I've got such a good, good, good thing going on for English teachers, but we'll talk about that some other time. Um, I could show you other videos, but, yeah, let's not push this whole technological gap too far. So I'd like to use the rest of the time today to first cover the second question that we have. All right, second question in the pre-class assignment was, uh, what exactly? Does anyone remember? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What are sounds that are unique to the English language? Sounds that are unique to the English language, apparently none. Yeah, uh, it was a trick question there. <laughs> it's up for debate. However, the TH sound, which seems to be only in English, you can find it in Welsh, you can find it in Icelandic, um, you can find it in modern, modern Greek, Sylvia will attest to that. Um, and other sounds as well. Even if you don't find them in other languages specifically, you might find them in other languages, but uh, with different accents. So it's not really about, oh, I can't do this sound. It's not, I've never heard of it before. And it's not even about, oh, let's teach them the sounds that are unique to the English language. Poor thing, they can't do it. No. We're all specific individuals. And me, you know, I've had, <laughs> I can't even hear that well. You know what I mean? So I, it's a hard, I have a hard time <laughs> learning different sounds. The different, the subtleties in Chinese, I just can't, I just can't pick them up. But say, if I spell the sound, I might be able to. That's the theory behind it. So for the rest of the time we got today, um, I'd love to answer questions, but I can't see the news feed. Let me just have a look here. Oh. Can, you, can you bring the chat up there? You got the chat now? I think I do. So I have a chat. chat is up. And I can help you with that. The, que the question answer stuff has been working really, really well in these sessions, so I'm glad you're going to leave time for it. And uh, I can look out for questions. Uh, Sylvia's here. Uh, Youssef, Tom, Shaki, a lot of uh, Claudia's here. A lot of our, um, our facilitators are here. So welcome, facilitators. And ne Dr. Nelly is here. So, uh, any questions about his idea? It's really a cool idea. Spell that sound. And some of you said you already do this with your students. Drew Badger was here recently talking about how 
Um, now, are you looking at this more about the beat? I just want to say Drew Badger uh, has uh, said something very similar, which is that I really liked the other day. He said that, you know, the phonemic chart, it's adding another step to fluency. <laughs> so I really like that. This is what Mal was saying, too, about his group in Brazil. Uh, but it's not, it's not a black and white situation. So some teachers say, well, you know, some of my students, especially older students, they may get motivated if they're looking at how to use the phonetic alphabet or at least get familiar. So there's no right or wrong here, perfect way to do it. But as a general tendency, I think we're finding, uh, you know, also uh, uh, Jennifer was talking about this. I think the more you teach, uh, the more you realize that some of this raising awareness actually gets becomes interference. So I just wanted to say that it's really great. We're all very similar in our thinking about this kind of thing. Uh, questions, how about the cheat sheet? Not it for people who just joined us? Right, the cheat sheet. Um, well, from what I saw here, um, was, there was a bit, uh, some people worried about the fact, oh, it's cheat sheet, like um, maybe not the concept of cheating, but maybe the idea that you're letting them, you know, check, that maybe they should be remembering things. Um, look, I think that it all depends on if you call it a cheat sheet and that you may, that sort of makes you feel like you're cheating. Call it something else because you need students. The students need to have some. Uh, it's just like notes. Call it your uh, your sound uh, your your sound note taking. All right, whatever it is, you just uh, need students to be able to have a whole list. Like I ask students to keep a glossary at the end of their notebooks. Every new word that they learn, they have to write at the back of their notebook so that they, you know, get familiarized with it. I let them write translations for it in Portuguese if they want to. Whatever helps them remember, you know what I mean? I let them do that with phrases. I think it works even better because nowadays people can Google any word they want and get a translation for it. I mean, if you're going to prevent them or discourage them from using it, that's a whole nother area to be discussed, I think. I think the, the issue here is the more help they can get, especially if they won't be able to practice later on, they need to be able to practice and they need to refer to something. So if they can check a dictionary online, they should definitely be able to have their own glossaries. And at the end, I don't ask them to make up, I saw another question, I don't ask them to make up special symbols or anything like that. I mean, if it's a design class, which I've taught for a while, we did that once. You know, they wanted to make their own symbols for their sounds and that's fine. No, whatever motivates them to work with these sounds because that's all it is in the end you know what Jason does by rapping you know what I mean with the with the with the language it's another way of practicing we need to give them as many different ways to practice as we can because practice and repetition is the soul of it and so if you can expand from words to phrases to sentences to whole you know what I mean speeches you know what I mean? Songs. That's the concept because with the, the when you start analyzing sounds, you also start analyzing uh, inclinations, declinations, or uh, and all the different uh, ups and downs of the language. Any other questions that we're going to Jason, you want to pick another one? Yeah, I got a good question here. And I just wanted to say, you know, um, I feel so strongly about what, what Ma was talking about. I just have to say one thing. You know, this whole idea in the age of Google, especially, uh, of, you know, keeping the input over here. I've got the answers. You know, you can't see it. What do you have up here? You know, that, that's never been right if the students don't have enough exposure. You know, if, if you get enough exposure, then fine. Let's see if you can remember how to say this or you remember this past participle. If they haven't gotten enough multiple exposures, why are we hiding the input? <laughs> you know, they, they need to see it all the time and hear it all the time, especially if outside of class they're not getting it. And if that's not enough, in the age of Google, the students know. They don't have to wait to get the knowledge from you. They can go get it themselves. So if you're not, if you're not following this now, you better get on board. Isn't that right, Mal? <laughs> And uh, I, was, I was actually seeing, sorry, did you have another question? We can't hear you though, it's that mic, it's that mic on the string thing. I want to just go there to Sao Paulo and, and, and shove that thing right in your face. <laughs> yeah, 
um, um, I'll put it in my mouth then. Oh, I got to work out. Um, <laughs> I have another question for you. Did, but did you want to add to that? And then I have another question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. The other question was from um, uh, Andres. I think it is. It's 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 gone. It's gone away now. But would you, for the cheat sheet or the help sheet or whatever you want to call it, the crib sheet? That's a good one too. Look up crib sheet. If you don't like the word cheat, crib means the same thing, but the students won't know that. Crib sheet is awesome for this maybe. But uh, would you want the, the cheat sheet to have just the sounds that they're struggling with and are different, or should it be, you know, the whole sound system? Sorry, what so, was that? Do you think it's better to have the cheat sheet be customized for the sounds that are different, <clears throat> in your case, Portuguese, English? Or that are, or they're struggling with, or to have it more, uh, just a bigger sheet with everything. I think uh, I think the cheat sheet is very very personal. I think um, even if you uh, if, even if you develop a cheat sheet for with uh, Brazilian sounds, like uh, I've noticed that I, I've got classes full of Brazilians. That's all I'm teaching, and they come up with loads of, of different sounds in in uh, Brazilian in Portuguese sounds. So um, it's not about developing one cheat sheet like a phonemic chart uh, that will, you know, uh, be the best of them all. Uh, it's it's it, that's part of the exercise. You want students to think about how they're pronouncing things because it goes beyond just the sound. I get students going uh, when, when we run into, you know, uh, uh, well, different words that, that, that uh, pronounce the same way, what, uh, but they're spelled differently. Can you homonyms? Uh, then basically. You know, people just, oh, yeah, English is such a yada yada language because, um, yeah, why do they have words that are pronounced the same way but they're spelled differently? And they don't realize that every language has that. So then, you know, uh, once you show them, look, in Portuguese it's the same way. You know, you got two words that basically spell the same way, uh, that, are, that are pronounced the same way but mean different things. And so the levels of, uh, of, of, uh, of knowledge, of, of analysis, of their own language and how they look at language just changes, and you throw it on, on on its head because people just see things differently. And if you're able in a classroom to actually, you know, bring to, all those ideas together, I tell all the students there's no wrong answer, but I notice that some of them are because I have to check after I give each of these students, uh, like after we do our first day with this, they have maybe 15 words that they've written down uh, on their cheat sheet. I'll just uh, the next uh, lesson I'll go over it again, and they've all got the same words. And I'll I'll do this. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, assess them orally, individually, and I'll I'll notice that at least 10 to 15 percent of them they've got it written down perfectly, but they're still pronouncing it wrong because for them the sound isn't like it was for their friend who they copied it from. For them, it's different. It's just you know what I mean. Uh, the way we see colors differently, honestly, my wife is an architect and she can see at least 18 different shades of purple on the wall. To me, this is purple, bro. This is purple. So uh, I don't see that many colors. So people don't, don't hear that many sounds either, you know. So we all adapt to that. So it has to be personal. That's a great answer, and you know the, <clears throat> how language shapes culture and culture shapes language is so fascinating. And you really, I think, just need to be completely open as a teacher uh, as much as you can to that. Uh, when you've got a class of uh, mixed cultures and languages, which I've which I've had for the last sixteen years, it's it's a little tough sometimes. Uh, but it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Uh, one question that keeps coming up, and uh, Mao, just so you know. Uh, and everybody knows, uh, Sir Tom, the facilitator, his charge is to uh, paste the chat as a link uh, into the course feed for us and also we'll put it in your pre-class uh, thread. So if there are questions after, uh, you know, Mal might have somewhere to run to right after this, but he will be there to check that out before we put the post-class assignment up because people have to watch the recording. We're going to keep the pre-class chat going a bit, especially with your questions. Uh, but one question that keeps coming up, we definitely should get in here. What about teaching phonics explicitly? Not in a boring way, maybe. Not in a way that gets them stressed out. But what use is there 
of not just doing what you're talking about, but bringing in any kind of phonics focus? Um, like like uh, using the, the chart itself, the phonemic chart? I don't think the chart is much. I mean, there, there are some fun, interesting ways to, to play, you know, to, to do stuff with phonics, to learn the sound system. Uh, just wondering what, you know, what you feel about that. Oh, well, uh, I love it, you know. I really, really, any, uh, any, any activity that um, makes people think about how, how they're saying words and it takes them beyond the put this word here now and get the idea across, you know, takes people out of a robot stage. And uh, once you start analyzing the, 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 the subtleties, you know, and that, that's what phonics, I think, is, is the best for because... I mean, everyone wants to speak. You know, you, I saw a lot here. Oh, how do I get people to speak like a native, uh, like a native, like a native? Well, it all depends what kind of native. I know, native from where? You know what I mean? Uh, I, I got, I, I had students in Australia who pleaded with me in the beginning, teach me English, but don't give me an Aussie accent. And I was like, dude, it's, uh, what? You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not like that. You, I've, I've noticed, for example, um, I mean, I, I grew up around the world. I was lucky in that way. So I picked up different accents. I mean, I grew up in the States and then I moved to England and uh, lived in Australia for eight years. Um, you'll hear me speaking with an, uh, with an Aussie drawl when I get like really laid back. You'll hear me like uh, with a, Jace might say, with a New York accent when I get really excited. I grew up in, in uh, New Orleans as well. So, you know, it's uh, certain things. What I'm trying to say is certain ideas just come out uh, more comfortably in certain accents, you know, or in certain rhythms, depending on who the person is. So um, we need, phonics isn't just about the sound. That's what I'm trying to get out. It's about discovering personality. And the only way you speak a language is actually discovering your personality in that language, because the speaking the language is enveloping the culture. So. You know, if you're brought up in a specific kind of culture, your beliefs are specific. Therefore, the way you speak is specific. Your intonation is specific. It's, it's just, you know what I mean? It, it, we got to take people beyond the idea of this is a schwa. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you, man. And what people are pointing out here, um, as of course we all know, is one thing that could be boring and stressful to someone else might be interesting uh, and relaxing to someone else. We've got to experiment, play around, know your students, know their objectives, their needs, their interests. The other thing that's coming up here is a little conversation. Uh, uh, aside from talking about the posterior part of the body and how that, that relates to phonics, I don't know, if, Mal, if you caught that. Uh, there was a typo that uh, was great uh, uh, back there. Uh, someone's asking, uh, they're asking about your students a little bit, the level and the age, so maybe you can talk about that. But also, sure. uh, another thing is, another conversation is that you Canadian, and people are talking about accents. The Canadian, I think it's just the, the hair and, and, the, and the fashion choice. No, sorry, Dr. Say, Nelly, and sorry for that. No, 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 <laughs> it's, uh, I, I gotta say this. I was in I was in Sydney and I was at the bank and the cashier was like, "What part of Canada are you from?" And I've never been to Canada. I, I'd love to go, but I've never been. And I'm like, I don't know. She said, "Of course you're Canadian. My mom is Canadian, and I I know what a Canadian sounds like." So, yeah, um, I guess I am. Maybe I'm a Canadian from another life. I'd love to be Canadian. Can Canada rocks. Hey. Eh? Uh, listen, how about how about speaking Brazilian for a second? Because I don't think anyone can possibly believe that you are uh, as good in Portuguese. Yeah, as sorry, I, I, I was going. I, that's where I was going. Where I was, I got sidetracked before when I was talking about accents. Um, like I said, when I speak Portuguese, I'm from São Paulo originally. I was born here, um, but I I hung out with lots of Brazilians from the south of Brazil uh, when I was in a, when I was in Sydney. So. Uh, and I lived for a while up in northeastern Brazil in Bahia. So my accent is muddled like that, too. They're just, like I say, certain words just come out better in certain accents. That's what I believe, and we should be free to explore. And so, um, yeah, I don't know if I should speak Portuguese here. because yeah, maybe green, we, have some, we have some Brazilians here. Just say hello to them. That's all. 
Beleza, galera. Meu nome é Maurício, eu nasci em São Paulo, mas dizem que de vez em quando eu pareço gaúcho. Então, é mais ou menos isso. Mas é, se eu estiver bem relaxado, pode sair com o Stag Bayern também. Tô forçando agora, mas, mas pode sair sim. Anyway, that was Portuguese for you from the south of Brazil, the north and middle of Brazil. Nice. Well, how about some more questions? Oh, one question. Uh, Pam was asking about how old your students are. Uh, one yeah, thing you yeah, should yeah. know if you don't if you don't know about Mao, he does a lot of online teaching, so he has a lot of adults that he works with. He also does really cool uh, meetups outside on the ground, not online, with his students, and then works with them online. He's got a really cool thing going. If you know Nina Nina English Berno in 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 uh, in uh, uh, not Prague, she's in Brno, <laughs> in the Czech Republic, she does that too. Uh, but Mao's also talking earlier with the cheat sheet, you're talking about a group of young kids, right? Can you tell us just again about that group? Yeah, the, the, the kids I work with at the NGO, they're, um, they're all teenagers. So they're, yeah, last year, so they're around 16, an average of, uh, yeah, 15, 16 years old. Um, they, uh, they're, they're basically, their level of English, it's interesting because some of them um, have actually studied more. They've Because uh, here in Brazil, you only really learn English if you go to some other yeah, school outside of your school, a private English school. Um, and some of them have one or two because, like I say, these kids are low-income kids. Uh, so they know a bit more. Some of them paid attention at school, so they know a bit more than others. So you're not only working with teenagers uh, that don't know much Portuguese. They, it's mixed levels as well. So that's something I'd like to say. Uh, the thing about doing Spell That Sound is that it doesn't matter whether you've, uh, what level your students are. You know what I mean? It's um, You can have mixed levels. I work a lot with mixed levels. I actually believe in only two levels, absolute beginners and everybody else. Man, I actually, I'd love to have a class, uh, you know, if, if, if you don't know everybody, uh, the, uh, I know some, some of the information about the MOOC is kind of mysterious. That's because this is only our second time doing it. The idea is to do it three times a year with different themes. But certainly, uh, a class management type of theme, that sounds very boring. But things about, like, you know, I'm not, we're not going to call it that, don't worry. But uh, I think getting into some issues with, uh, you know, as teachers, like, what are levels? And, and is it actually serve our interests, especially going forward with technology and uh, English as a lingua franca or world English, to be so uh, specific about levels? But that's another thing. But I, I really like what he just said, beginners and everybody else. Um, another question, Mal, and we only have four minutes left. Let me make a Club EFL uh, announcement. For pre- and post-class assignments, please, for the post-class assignment, follow what you see in the courseware. Club EFL is going to be a really important place for us, uh, but we're getting some things ready there. So for now, uh, the easiest thing, when you get the post-class assignment, a tutorial in courseware, and I'll put the link in Mao's pre-class also. Just follow the instructions there. Don't get too creative and start posting things. So for now, just just do that. Uh, you can post in Club EFL, please do, because we are going to get there and be sharing there. So you're welcome to do anything. Yep, if Mariela, if you did it with mine, fine. Uh, no problem. So uh, Mao, one more question. I think a uh, very interesting one for everybody. How did you go to Australia? Why were you in India teaching? You were, you know, in Europe. Uh, and do you have plans to do more of that in the future? Oh, yeah. Um, well, English, I got into English teaching because I, I learned English really, really, really young. So, and I, I don't know, I liked spelling. Uh, I like. I, I just had. I was stick with the, you know getting stuff right in English. I just liked it. Uh, but and I've always liked. And I grew up traveling, as I said before. So I went to. Uh, I went to Australia, and I was invited to teach there for at a at a university for a while. And yeah, develop online courses, which um, yeah took me when I decided to move back to Brazil. Well, while I was in Australia, then we had connections with. Uh, universities in, in Bangkok as well, so I was there teaching for a while. And um, I mean, the rest of the work I did in India and uh, in Indonesia and um, 
Slovakia in, in Europe was mostly volunteer work because I wasn't I wasn't based there, you know. So I I taught the monks up in Dharamsala, uh, where the Dalai Lama lives, but uh, because they were yeah they needed somebody to be, somebody to teach them. I taught kids in Indonesia in a, in a village in Lombok because yeah they just wanted to learn. It's uh, that's basically what I do. If people want to learn, if they really want to learn, I mean, how can I say no to that? So thankfully, I've been blessed with uh, yeah very little material possessions that keep me grounded anywhere. So I, I, I use that to my advantage. I really do. I use the fact that I, I'm a good traveler and that I want to teach to teach whoever wants to be taught. In, and I'm going to say, let's use this last one minute and 20 seconds since some of these recordings people are watching were like out of here so quickly. Uh, and the people who are here don't have enough time to say goodbye. Uh, we're going to, for your questions that are here, you can make quest questions all the way till the end because we're going to copy uh, Tom, facilitator Tom, Sir Thomas is going to post that uh, this chat. Uh, we'll all be able to look at it. And you can continue to ask questions also that you, if you remember your question that we did not uh, address, you could put that in the pre-class chat. So the pre-class chat is not just before the actual class. Remember, a lot of people are watching the recording later. So we're going to keep that live and happening. Uh, so it's a little bit of a post-class. It's a class chat about the class. The assignment will be in courseware. And that will be pretty soon. Don't worry, you'll see it. 32 seconds. Mal, thank you so much. It was wonderful. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> Can Thanks. I just say one last thing, guys? Uh, I'm. I love. I love. I, well, I love teaching. I love this whole thing. I love talking about it. Uh, and so, whoever wants to chat, feel free to to hit me up any on my website tripping.com here at WizIQ Club EFL. Um, yeah, anywhere basically. I'm all over the web, so don't be shy. Three, 